all right welcome again to day number four of seven mindset shifts that changed my life and marriage it's a pleasure to have you here again and uh, i believe that we are going to have a great time today so let me check those who are online and say hello to somebody let's do that as we usually do it all right all right that's good that's good that's good so if you are there with me live i want you to type hashtag live if you are there catching this on the replay hashtag replay today i am i will be talking about marriage mostly yes valerie good to see you good to see you welcome welcome it is going to be mostly about marriage today but the principles can be used elsewhere of course the principles can be used elsewhere for those who have been with us for the past uh, three days we have been going through certain mindset shifts that if you would apply them 2023 will become so much more if impactful and uh, joyful and peaceful for you and it will transform your marriage as well all right so usually i like to start with prayer because when we pray we open up ourselves to receiving even more from god than we can imagine or even plan and so father i pray for everyone who is with me here live right now and those who will be joining later and, and of course, those who will be catching this on the replay, I pray for a fresh grace to obey. And I pray that our hearts will be open to see things the way you see them and allow ourselves to trust you to do what only you can do. I pray for everyone that is part of this group and those who will be catching this on YouTube, that they will have God's size um results and transformations this year 2023 in jesus mighty name i pray amen and amen all right so we're gonna go to today's discussion last time yesterday when i finished i said i was going to start with the pyramid and that's what i'm going to do usually i start with a mindset but today i will be starting with the pyramid so if you see me look this way it's because i want to check if someone says something in the group in the chat my facebook uh, chat is right here and if you see me looking this way my slides are right there um, and you are right here so i'm looking at you now and i pray that you will get the most from this from this thank you now let's start with the marriage pyramid and I will share that on the screen. The Mary Pyramid is uh, my way of showing to you how people are in their marriage. The majority of people are in the group of hopeless and waiting, hopeless or waiting, and and a smaller group are struggling and drifting or drifting, and a smaller group still are growing, and the final smallest group are the ones that are happy um or, or the marriage is blissful and i want to explain all those to you so you can know where you are and you can move to the next level you can know where you are and you can move to the next level so i want to start with those who who feel hopeless in their marriage they are not hopeless in their lives they just feel they feel hopeless and for those who feel hopeless they're in usually they are spouses they, this Two spouses de depend on each other. They, you know, it's it's a relationship where you you know that um, what your spouse is doing is making you miserable, and and they they also feel that what you are doing or not doing is making them feel miserable, and they are always trying to make you change your behavior so that they can have more joy. They they're always thinking, I would unless my spouse changes like this or that, I'm not going to be happy that mindset makes you feel hopeless because after complaining harassing tricking reporting praying for years and then they don't change you 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 tend to settle and think that they're not going to ever change and that's why those people feel hopeless 
and uh they i'm going to read what i what i've written here they fail each other so they keep doing things to force guilt beg their spouse into making them happy it's something if that's how you you've been doing you will soon fall into the hopeless state because you may discover after four years five years and some five years and some people ten years they before they realize that you know what this person may not change may not change so after many years they become hopeless um and, and those who are waiting um they're just saying you know what this is over i'm not going to be able to change them um, and uh, they wait for their for one person to to initiate the divorce process and in rare cases some are very very weird um and i've met i've met people who are like this who are saying you know what God doesn't like divorce, and I, I can't. I'm not going to divorce, uh, but I wouldn't lie to you. Sometimes I get, I wonder if um, my spouse has to die before I can get out of this. And it's sad, sad, sad. I wish no one thought like that, but I know, I know that people think like that. And it's a sad thing. And all of that comes from what we're going to talk about today. What I'm going to talk about today would throw more light on how, why a person will come to this conclusion that, you know what, I'm not going to divorce. I'm just going to wait patiently for something to happen. Uh, it's a hopeless situation. Usually people in this state do not go looking for help because they co they've concluded that there's no help for them. I want to tell you though, that if you're in this state, there is help for you. You just have to change your mind from this hopeless state because in a in a hopeless state like this when you're thinking that there's no hope you really won't have the energy to do anything you won't even want to look for help but if you are in this situation where you you don't know how your spouse is ever going to change and you know that you're you're struggling a lot with what's going on and you want to be happy you want to be joyful there's hope for you I can help you and God has helped use me to help others in that state. Uh, but usually, <laughs> sad and unfortunately, most of the people that are in this state do not take the time to watch videos like this. They do not take the time to register for events like this and um, they, they, they're not ready to work. But if, for example, you are in the waiting state, so those in the waiting states still look for help. Why? Because they still have hope. They have hope that their spouse will change. They have hope that something will happen and there will be transformation. They don't, they, the result is not different. <laughs> the result is not different. It's just a matter of time they will get to the hopeless state if they continue like that. If you just wait and wait and wait, eventually you become hopeless too because you discover that you've waited for 10 years and things are not happening. In fact, what happens what I've noticed uh, in my own experience is that when they hit 50, 40 and 50, between 40 and 50, when people hit those numbers, they just snap. They, they stop waiting. They feel that, you know what, it's now hopeless. Why? Because suddenly it occurs to them that they cannot live the rest of their life in this miserable state. And so they, they, break, they, they shut down and they say, no more. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. So, but those in a waiting state, they still look for help. They're looking for help though in the wrong way. They're looking for help to know tricks and uh, um, ways to change their spouse. And when they're looking for help to change their spouse, they can get some tricks and some tips. And when you have those tricks and tips, they will move the marriage forward a bit. And But then by the time um, you, you use those tricks, they work for a few days or a week, a few weeks, then you go back many steps beyond where you were before. Why? Because the foundation, the foundation is wrong, both for the one who's looking for trip, tick, trip, uh, ticks, <laughs> tricks and tips to help them and the one who is actually needing the help. So you recognize many weaknesses in your spouse and it makes your, the marriage miserable. But you still have hope that your spouse will change. So you are just waiting. So you are just waiting for the transformation to happen because you have done so much with little result. If you're in the States, I, I want to say to you also, waiting is not the key. The key is taking action, the right type of action. And uh, I will be happy to help you make those actions. And, and there's several videos that I have that you can watch to begin the process. 
um, to, for transformation, you cannot afford to keep waiting. If you wait too long, what's going to happen is that you, your heart's going to get hard, hard, hardened because you get hurt and hurt and hurt. You're going to develop bad habits to cope with your hurt. And as you develop those habits, you find yourself that the negative things that you never thought you would do, you start doing them. And after a while, you get you feel, you you join the group of hopeless. That's why I put them on the same group. That's why they're the largest number. When you as soon as you get married, your spouse will do something that you don't like. Your spouse will do something that makes you feel as if you are you're doing the wrong thing. You made a wrong choice. Um, that's how, that's who they are. They were like that before you met them. They were like that before you chose to marry them. It's just that you are discovering that. And that should give you hope, but sometimes it doesn't. Some people feel that they were tricked. No, the truth is, what you liked is is that person with their weaknesses. You liked them. They didn't suddenly change because they got married. They've been like that. And, uh, and so if you learn how to handle that and take care and, and use the, the, the joy that you have right now when the marriage is still good and you're still in the waiting state, you will get quick result and get less hurt so but those the thing is those who are in the hopeless and waiting state they usually don't go for help why because they think that you know i'm just going to wait it out it's going to work it's going to be, the person is going to change uh, or there's no there's no hope this person's never going to change and all you're going to tell me to do is to 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 do all sorts of things that will not work uh, and so they never get they, they never look for help and when they even get help offered to them they don't take it because they, they are sure that there's no way. They, they are so convinced that there's no way out. That's the marriage pyramid. That's the biggest number. And that's why I do this. I do this to, with the hope that if you have been impacted, there are certain people in your life that I may never have access to that you can transfer this impact to. This is what gives me the momentum and the passion for what I do. Uh, I don't think that the few people that I can help uh, is enough uh, motivation for me to do this. No, I, I, I see beyond the people I help right now. I see your children, your, their own children, and I see your, your circle. And I, I'm trusting God that the transformation in your life will bring transformation to their lives. So if you are with me, as usual, hashtag live or say hello so i know that you are there i want to celebrate you and uh, and say hi to you the second group of people who are waiting there are two groups of waiting people uh, they this ones they've moved beyond just um depending on the other person they they've taken responsibility for their joy and peace they have done that um so you, in your life you feel you know what i'm, I'm not going to just uh, wait i'm going to try to build my own life i'm going to try to follow purpose and what god created me for but you feel that your spouse does not so your your spouse doesn't do that so they so they, you feel the weight of their neediness so they're always needy you didn't go to the um gym with me you didn't do this you have not done that they're always complaining complaining nagging 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 um and so there's that weight and um and because they have grown and they have been transformed they have this understanding that the other will grow so you sometimes feel that you might need to leave the marriage for you to grow you're tired of being blamed for everything that your spouse uh, uh, for everything and your spouse seems to trigger the worst in you so that's another group of people that wait deep down you know things and work that's why you're looking for help so there are some people who are in the waiting list they are, they're just waiting but while they're waiting they they have this sense that because i was i i grew so they they've grown they've taken responsibility for their joy and peace so they have this hope that their spouse will do the same and 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 this ones will really would look for help because they know that if they have the right tools they may be able to trigger that change in their spouse and i hope that if that is you you're going to take advantage of this opportunity and bring that transformation now let's go to the next group so the group here the first group is hopeless they, they no hope i i don't think it's going to work uh i think divorce is where we're going uh, with time maybe once the children are out of the house and i, I don't need to depend on uh, i don't need to care for them anymore they are matured enough we're going to go our separate ways if that's you that's the hopeless state and then waiting you're just waiting 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 now i'm going to talk about the next group struggling or drifting so struggling let's read out what i've written here 
you thought things were somewhat okay in your marriage all right so the group this group of people they are struggling so there's ups and downs sometimes it's good sometimes it's bad uh sometimes it's just uh, really really bad and sometimes it's kind of good so you're struggling it's just many things happening so uh be, but recently your spouse has been saying that they're down with the marriage so in this case this person um has been doing their thing they know they are weak they know they are cha they have challenges uh but their spouse is dissatisfied and you know that you have some weaknesses and but they too they too have weaknesses you wanted to work on yourself but now You've been always saying, I'm going to work on myself. I'm going to try to do one or two things to make the marriage get better. I'm going to put my put my feet down one day and learn. Um, but, th but then now your spouse is saying, I'm done. It's, uh, you have, I've complained enough and you're not changing. And uh, maybe in this in, in this group of people that are struggling like this, their spouse, some spouses have moved out. Um, some spouses are, have cheated. They're cheating. Uh, there's, there's infidelity now. Um, some, some spouses are just move to another room in the house, maybe to the basement. So you cannot, right now, you cannot imagine your marriage failing, and so you need help. Now, these people are the ones that really cry out for help the most because they are struggling. They know what to, what to do. They know what needs to be done. They just don't find the strength to do it. And the reason why they don't find the strength to do it, they may not know that, is that they don't have a clear strategy and they don't have a, someone to keep them accountable but they don't know that so they sometimes they go reading books and they the more you read books the more you know what you need to do but doing it is different from knowing it and, and so that's where we come in that's where i come in i don't only show you what you need to do but i show you the order in which you do them and i keep you accountable to do them and give you a group of people to motivate you to do them uh, but people in this group usually struggle and they need help and every opportunity they have to watch something they are doing it those are my biggest fans they want to know what to do they're learning what to do they are watching all my videos they're making all the comments and some of them of course are in the program and they're growing so this is struggling struggling the nice group of people is drifting you feel fulfilled in many areas of your life, so you're doing all right, um, and the marriage is kind of okay. Your, your your spiritual life is good. You do not have many disputes with your spouse, but you seem to be drifting apart. So these people have learned, both of them have learned to um, derive their joy from other things, from from their work, from their hobby. They are just going, but sometimes they're a little bit more so independent and and uh, arrogant about it so much so that they they begin to drift apart so this sexual intimacy is low uh connection is low um so they don't know um you, your spouse doesn't know how you feel um you, you feel that your spouse is not there to share your fears and your joys um so when your spouse comes out, uh, around in the night they're tired you wait for the right time to share something with them and then it's two weeks and and more things are happening and you find yourself um sharing your deeper thoughts with your friends rather than your spouse and so so drifting you wonder who they share their own thoughts with and so all of that sorry all of that begins to make you feel that something is wrong and it needs to be better and that's why we put you in this group here struggling or drifting and there's a number of people that are there they're not it's not it's they're not struggling as bad as the people who the marriage is really off one person has decided that i don't want to do anymore both are still there However, they, they, they feel one person really feels that we're, we're going apart. And if this continues, the marriage is going to break. These people also like they always go out to get materials to build friendship and to recover um, intimacy, recover um, uh, uh, com a passion among themselves. And there's, there's help. There's help. I want you to know anyone in any marriage, you can have help. Um, you don't need to be hopeless. The, the more difficult it looks, the more God can intervene. And I'm so happy that even those whose situation looks so, so, so hopeless will be able to help. And I will always thank God because he has made a way. Now, the next step is growing. Look at that here again, growing, the green one, growing. Uh, these are people that are working. They're working hard. So, you know your weaknesses and those of your spouse. You have accepted that they may not change, but you have decided that you will have a great life and marriage. So if you have been following some of the things that I've been teaching and you are taking them at heart, 
you're going to be finding yourself gradually moving into the growing stage. And of course, growing is, is better when your spouse is also growing. And if you are in the stage where you are growing and your spouse is not yet growing, you may find yourself struggling. But if you continue to grow, you will grow to the point where you are able to trigger their, their growth as well. And that's when you really fall properly into the growing stage. You have gotten a coach to help you with your weaknesses. You're learning to love without conditions. Uh, this is important. All the things we teach is about love. And, and so you're learning them. You're learning to love without conditions. You know you will inspire your spouse to change as long as they are willing to stay in the marriage. And you've decided to live fully uh, uh, and um, as a love being. You've decided to live fully as a love being and to enjoy the life that God has given to you. If you're in this state, then you're growing. And you will know that the seeds that you are sowing are bearing fruit. So you've learned how to sow love seeds. You've learned how to um, not make demands. You ra you rather make requests. You've learned a lot of the things that I've been teaching. You've had a coach. You've been you've been helped. You And at this time, you've just seen your joy level grow steadily. And you are learning now to inspire your spouse to do the same. If you're in this state, it's good. It's good because what you're going to be experiencing is that your, your ups and downs will reduce and eventually you begin to see your spouse beginning to come to uh, aspire to be like you because you, you're, you're joyful, you're making progress and you're, you're, you're loving them. Every human wants to be loved unconditionally. And so when you become good at it, you will discover that your spouse become attracted to you because you're able to continue to love them, especially when they fail you, especially when they say the wrong things, especially when they do the wrong things, you, had le you learn how to be firm and kind. So that's what happens in the marriage pyramid. And that's the, la the level of growing. The final level, which is the one of being happy or blissful, it's, it's the one that we all aspire to and it's where I want to bring everyone that's in this group to. It's my prayer for every one of us. And, and that is, you are both growing and uh, you, you, you feel that you know the inner thoughts of your spouse. You know that your spouse cares for you. You care for them as well. You know that they are happy and you, you want to be around each other. Both of you want to be around each other. And when you have disputes, you have your ways of resolving them quickly and effectively, not just sweeping them under the bed or uh, pretending that they, they didn't happen. You know how to speak truly to each other and resolve conflicts. And uh, things are looking great when you think of the future uh, together, growing all together, you feel joy coming in your heart. Then that's fantastic. That's beautiful. That's where you want to be. And I want to say it again. It's possible. It is possible. It's what God designed us to have. God never designed us to suffer. The, the cross that the Bible talks about is not marriage. And, and of course, jumping out of it doesn't solve it either because you jump into another one. And as long as the person that you're getting married to is not a robot, as uh, a human, you're going to feel some challenges and you got to grow. As long as you, you're living with another person, you got to learn to grow and, uh, and build a relationship through love. All right. So that is it. That's, that's, that's a married pyramid. I, I promised to share that. I wanted to share it last night, but the time has been fast spent. And so let's get to, let's get to today. Uh, the mindset number four. Now, if you were, if you got the married pyramid and you could locate yourself on it, I want you to type hash, uh, hashtag. I got it. <laughs> I, I got it. I don't want you to type, type where, you, where you're located, where, where your, your position in the pyramid, because I don't, I don't want to put you on the spot. But what I want you to type is, I got it. And even when you're watching this on the replay, I want you to type, I got it. I got it is so important. I want to know that you, you understand the different layers that, that we can be in. And uh, I want you to begin to envision yourself moving towards the blissful, the happy state. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for sharing that, um, Valerie. Now let's get to the mindset number four. Mindset number four for today is the value you place on your marriage or your spouse is directly proportional to the blessings you get from it or from them, from your spouse. All right. Uh, I say it in another way. The more I value my marriage or the more I value my spouse, the more blessings I can receive from it or from them. This is so important. Um, on Sunday, I was talking with somebody and they were sharing with me that 
they uh, they don't want to get married uh, they are not christian they are, I, I, I was just connecting with them and they, they they were meeting with us and they wanted to know um they are hungry to know more about god so we're discussing um and they were saying that marriage can be a problem in the community we are now that they remember the person who had some uh, medical condition and they couldn't get help from the government because they were married to a person that had money that that, that 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 was rich but that person wasn't even kind enough to share that money and and most times and the thing is there's not that the, the person was not just kind enough to share also he didn't have the money because he wasn't really use he wasn't using money well so he didn't have the money with him although he had a income and so they were feeling that it, it's not a good thing to be married uh, now that's 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 not the thing i want to talk about today i want to talk about marriage in terms of the union i want to talk about marriage in terms of what god wants us to do not just uh, the the ceremony of weddings or the the documentation that's attached to it i know it has a place to play uh, a part to play but that's not what i want to talk about today i want you to talk about think about marriage as the union the union all right uh, so let's get back to the mindset that we must we must have and it's the mindset that god proposes and and talks about the value you place on your marriage the value you place on your marriage is directly proportional to the blessings you derive from it this is the reason why many people this uh, get marriage destroyed because if they don't value their spouse because when i i put spouse their marriage because they're intertwined um they don't value that's why I, I explained also that when I'm talking about marriage, I'm not talking about the ceremony or the documentation. I'm talking about the, the union, the friendship, the friendship, the, uni the unity. So that's what you should value, not whether someone goes to the courts and says, I want a divorce. If you're, if, you're, if you're sleeping in different rooms, you already lost the value of marriage. Marriage is already broken, uh, even though um, officially it's not broken. So that's what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about marriage, I'm talking about the real union, the joy, the peace, the, the enjoyment the, that you have. So the value, the value you place on that, the value you place on being uh, on the top of that pyramid is what determines what you draw from it. Because if you value something, you're going to invest in it. If you value something, you're going to invest in it. For example, we just had a World Cup and uh, we're not subscribed to any channel. Uh, in our home we don't usually watch tv we use the computer most of the time so we're not subscribed to any channel to watch the the world cup football uh soccer world cup but when it was starting i subscribed for a month and then after the month i did i unsubscribed now why am i saying sharing that with you because i like soccer i i subscribed i invested in it um and when i wanted to learn how to use facebook ads i invested thousands of dollars in learning that um, when I wanted to get my master's in engineering, I invested thousands of dollars in getting that. What you value, you invest in. But I discovered that a lot of people, I talk to them as, how much have you invested in your marriage? Nothing. How many books have you read this year about marriage? Nothing. How many coaches have you hired to help you with marriage? Nothing. Why? The value they place on a beautiful marriage is so low that they struggle. Now, somebody says, the reason why I'm not valuing my marriage is because it's struggling. No, it's struggling because you didn't put the right value on it from the one, from the beginning. That's when you start putting value i know it, it may be challenging and i know that there are certain situations that may be different but i want you to take note of this the more i value my marriage the more blessings i can receive from it and i have a question for you just imagine you don't have to answer it but just think about it if someone comes to you and says um i will really i'm ready to pay you any amount all i need you to do is divorce your spouse divorce your spouse and let me get a chance to try to uh, take them take over your position in 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 your marriage. Uh, now it's a ridiculous question. Uh, nobody will come to do that. But just think about it. Say you meet someone. Someone gives you a proposal. This is what I want you to do. You just all you have to do is go home now and say to your spouse, "I don't love you anymore. I'm divorcing you, and I won't talk to you." And you go away for one year. No talking. No interaction. Um, and I will pay you any amount that you want. Um, what 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 amount would you ask for and i know that depends on where you are in this pyramid 
It depends so much on where you are in this pyramid. If you're in the hopeless or waiting one, you will say, you know what? I will pay you to take my spouse away from me. I will pay you. Some people are like that. They will pay. They, they're just they are just waiting. Um, and it's sad. Uh, I'm laughing, but it's not so funny when, they, when you're feeling that pain. And I feel I, I, I can only imagine the pain that you're feeling because I've been there where uh, things were not going well. I'm working, 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 and I'm getting very little result. That was early on when we didn't, I didn't understand uh, any of this. But what I'm saying to you is that if someone can pay you any amount of money to take your spouse, take your position in your marriage, you are willing. So if you are, if when I ask you that question, you think any amount. Any amount is okay. That means you are in the hopeless state. If you are uh, in the struggling state, you're gonna you're gonna be tempted with some big amount, say one million, two two hundred thousand, whatever the amount, fifty thousand, one hundred thousand, one thousand, two thousand. I don't know for you. Uh, that's because you're struggling. So it depends on where what what happened recently uh, in the struggling state. In the growing state, you become you begin to think of really large amounts, and you're gonna be saying, no, I can't do that. No, no. But in the blissful state, in the happy stage. No matter the amount of money, you never want to ever, 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 ever hurt the one that you love so much. There's no amount anybody can pay for you, pay you to hurt them. You will never do it. You will not think of doing it. You feel so disgusted. You feel like beating me up and saying, what type of a question is that? All right. Uh, I, I want, I, I'm just doing all of this to help you shift out of that mindset uh, where you, you have so low value low thoughts on on your marriage and you're not willing to invest in in it so um let me let me just say show you a scripture um a scripture that is quoted twice in the new testament but it, the first place you read it is in genesis and it says this is uh the writer of genesis saying for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and they will become one flesh. This is where I get the def definition of marriage from. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. This is the reason. The reason was the reason that he was saying he was uh, addressing the reason that the woman was taken out of the man and they became one. The woman was taken out of the man. So, so a man is doing his thing, doing his thing, doing his thing, or a woman doing her thing, doing her thing, doing her thing. They, they meet. They meet somehow. And as soon as they meet, they feel so connected. They feel so in, uh, so united. They, they, something triggers in them that this is me, this is me. They join together and become one. And, and they leave. The, the, the husband just makes up his mind that, you know what, I'm going to build my own home. Um, uh, and the wife says, I'm going to join him and we're going to build our home together and we're going to develop our own thing. Um, they, they, the connections, the ties with the family suddenly becomes weaker and it becomes this, the, the, marriage, the, the marriage union becomes the, the most important. This is important. And so I want to define marriage to you based on that mindset, right? Marriage is the union between a man and a woman who publicly commit to love one another for their entire lifetime. That's marriage. <laughs> That's marriage from that scripture. A union. The, the marriage is not the contract. The marriage is the union. The contract supports that union. The contract supports that union. The covenant supports that union. Marriage is the union between a man and a woman who publicly, publicly is important, not in the secret, not hidden, because publicly means I stand with this man, I stand with this woman public commit to love one another for their entire lifetime um, for the purpose of what multiplication why because God says be fruitful and multiply fulfillment fullfulness and bringing glory to God who created them this is what marriage should look like if you are not doing this that's because you need to renew that mindset you renew that mindset all right um, Yes, yes. So, so if you are with me and it's these things are uh, being helpful, you're getting what I'm saying. Let me get some some uh, fire emoji or love thumbs up in the chat to know that that is good. So finally, I'm going to just wrap up with um, the order, the order of priority and value, the value system. You you need to really examine your value system. I do examine mine from time to time, and that's what has helped me, and it's not just me. Every person that I've seen that had great marriages, they have a, an interesting 
value system that I want to share with you. An interesting value system. The value system that you have will determine how you handle your marriage. Oh, my dear sister, for me is right there. Thank you for showing some thumbs up and some fire Valerie. very good very good very good so the order the order in which you arrange things in your life will determine your how your marriage works and i have discovered that those who have this kind of order that you can see on my screen have had stronger more blissful more joyful marriage and here is the, the order god is first and when i say god is first i mean god's the relationship with god your personal interactive relationship with god hidden between you and god alone that one that one is most important that's the highest not ministry activities that's why i didn't i didn't put ministry activities up there it's different ministry activities or uh church activities or um uh whatever uh, outreach activities they have their place but not number one your personal relationship with god is number one um, and that's what Jesus was saying to his mom uh, when he was 12. I must be with my father. I'm, I, I, it's my relationship with him that matters. It's my connection with him that's number one. And that's what should be number one. Now, sometimes the activities is what strengthens that relationship. And so you may see some conflict there. But most importantly, you want to work on building that personal relationship. That should be number one. The second thing is health. Your physical health has the next value value in your life because if you don't have health you're not going to be able to love and do anything so your health and then the next after your health is your spouse your marriage your spouse is next why because the two let me read that scripture again the two become one flesh the two become one flesh so when the two become one flesh that means that it's the same it, it, it actually is supposed to be the same level as your health but but the reason why we put in two in this different order is because when your health is, is jeopardized you can't really love you can't really help your spouse so the spouse and you have become one and so they become the same level your the health of your spouse the spiritual well-being of your spouse the the the, the fruitfulness and and uh, and profitability of your spouse in the kingdom of god all of that become your next important and then the next after your spouse are your children I've met too many Christians who turn this upside down and put their children before their spouse. Uh, but the reason why they do that is because they don't understand that they have become one with their spouse. And so wherever they are is where their spouse is. So the next one is their ministry activities. You must not let ministry activities destroy your marriage or destroy your home when you discover there's a pain so what happens is that if your order is right and there's a, a problem in your home you will immediately work on fixing it all right and then after that is extended family then your work and then your hobbies you know what i notice work and hobbies usually creep up and just go all the way to the top they go even before people's health we can we fall into that trap all the time we just keep working 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 sometimes ministry activities they go all the way up and then they stay on top you don't want to do that you want to follow the order of course there are many trainings that i can do to help you get this order in place but that's not for today today is just mindset so what are the different mindset that you want to change from i'm just going to list them i'm not going to explain them in details but i want to list them in case you have any of those throw them out and develop a different mindset number one is marriage is a necessary evil we just have to do it because if we don't do it we're not going to be complete but it's not really good and uh, another one is marriage is to protect me from society because in, uh, in some societies if you're not married they look down on you uh, from sin so that i don't sin or from oppression uh, marriage is an escape from the restrictions in my bed home a lot of people run out of the mar uh, home to get married because if they don't if they don't do that they're going to be they, they're just going to be at home and and being oppressed uh, marriage is an opportunity to control a woman yes a lot of men think like that that once i get married i'm the boss i'm going to control her uh, it's not that's we don't see that in scriptures that's your own thing that's your own thing marriage is my obligation to keep the family name so they're just getting married to give birth to another child that will bear their name and my spouse is the one limiting me that's a mindset that is just totally off because your spouse is not 
it's not limiting you. They may have behaviors that can limit you. You are the one that are choosing to, to be limited. And marriage is a good financial strategy. There are some people that that's why they got married um, for the finances. You know, we put everything together instead of having two homes. We have one. We have more money. We can make more money. It's good to do that, but it's not the reason. Uh, and marriage is a commandment from God. This one, it looks good, but it's not true. God never commanded us to get married and God never commanded the man to leave the, the, the family and join with his wife. That's what happens when a person is just marriage is something that happens when a person opens their heart to follow God and God brings somebody to help them achieve what God wants them to achieve. It's not a command. It's a blessing. All right. I'm going to stop right there and remind you that I have a gift for you anyone that wants to take advantage of it adisubanja.com slash strategy if you want to take advantage of 15 minutes call for me to just um, look at what you're doing and and support you and help you it's a free call it's only 15 minutes um, if you need more there's more but that costs some money uh, in this call i'm not going to try to sell you anything i'm just going to tell you what you need to do going to help you build a strategy that's why it's called strategy call right so that's for today. Tomorrow, I'm going to come back with another mindset shift. Today, I want to remind you of the strategy for today. The more I value my marriage, the more blessings I can receive from it. The more I value my spouse, the more blessings I can receive from them. The value you place on your marriage is directly proportional to the blessings you get from it. All right, so that's it. I'm going to give you an assignment. I like to do that. Why don't you type that mindset in the chat before you leave? After you've heard this, put the mindset in the chat. The more the, va the value you place on your marriage is directly proportional to the blessings you draw from it, you get from it. Um, post it somewhere. Post it somewhere just to remind you and just to encourage you as you go on your journey. All right, I'm going to pray. Unless somebody has a question or a thought, uh, but this is this has been going on for for some time now. But I, I can still take a question if you do have one that is burning. Um, other than that, I would like to pray and um and invite you to the next one tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday. We're gonna do number five. Saturday number six and Sunday number seven. The final one. Right. All right. All right. All right. No question. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time. Thank you for all that you're doing. And those who have been with me live, thank you for the blessings that we're all getting from this. I, as I share, strengthening some of these mindsets in my own heart. And uh, those that are listening, just encouraging them. I pray that every one of us at the end of 2023 will be able to look back and say, wow, what a, what a year of great transformation. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. See you tomorrow. The same time, same place, same channel. And if you're on Facebook, uh, YouTube, you get this on YouTube. I want you to um, like the video, share it with your friends and uh, subscribe to the channel. Every Monday, I always come up um, with a uh, live on YouTube and I answer questions that will resume next week, Monday. All right. The Lord bless you. Bye for now.